Okay, so we're going to talk about the future of on-chain liquidity. Uh, so first, a little bit about myself. My name is Tal. I'm the co-founder of Orbs. Orbs is a blockchain infrastructure, infrastructure provider in layer three, and you can see our logo on the string around your neck. Um, I'm also an ambassador of the Ton blockchain. Ton blockchain is one of the most interesting L1 blockchains that you should be following today. It was conceived by Telegram uh, a while ago, uh, and it was supposed to serve Telegram's 800 million uh, user base, which is quite exciting. I'm also a mentor in the DeFi.org Accelerator. I've been in crypto since 2015, and I'm a London native. I live here since 2021. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is why many of us in the industry are thinking that the next bull run is going to be on chain. Now we always use to CFI being the, the big, you know, the big biggest player uh, in the bull runs, and we've seen that before. But we believe that's going to change in the next one. And, and let's see some reasons for that. So first of all, let's see that DeFi and on-chain trading is actually mature and has been mature for many years now. So if we took a look at base assets and where base assets are traded, and when I say base assets, I mean Bitcoin, uh, Ether, uh, all the top 10 uh, assets in terms of liquidity and volume and market cap, you see that the largest um, DEX today, which is Uniswap on chain, and you take one of the largest exchanges out there, Coinbase, just on stage now, second exchange, uh, largest exchange in the US, uh, in, the, in the world, and the largest in the US, you see that the trade volume is kind of equal which is quite surprising, and even Uniswap can win a little bit here and there, but you see that trading on DeFi is happening and mature for years. Now, another interesting thing is alt assets. When I say alt assets, is these are the crazy new assets where people feel that they could get 100x investments of, uh, whether it's uh, you know, the next meme coin. So these, all these new assets are, are not listed in CFI. They're only listed on DeFi, only listed on chain. We've seen quite a nice run now uh, on base, uh, which was quite exciting. We also see on chain new assets that are not actually tokens. For example, Frentech. I don't know if any of you have used this platform or read about it. Frentech, people are trading keys. What are keys? There are, no there are not NFTs and they're not exactly fungible tokens. Now, CFI is years away from listing these things and, and wrapping their head around these things. Okay, it's so much easier to list things on DeFi and on, on, on chain that the newest assets are always there. Now, I'm not a, a regulatory guy, I'm a tech guy, like you mentioned, um, and I'll just read from like, some uh, headlines I read in the newspaper lately. So the SEC charges Coinbase for operating as an unregistered securities exchange, blah, blah, blah. CFTC charges Binance and its founder with willful evasion of blah, blah, blah. Uniswap also dismissed DeFi crypto exchange not liable. The sentiment I see when I read as a user the news, I see that the sentiment on CFI is more and more scrutinized. DeFi a little bit less. Now, why is that? As a user, I can tell you that personally I feel safer with DeFi because many things I can check for myself and I don't need the regulator looking out for me. And all of this scrutiny is causing some interesting things in the market. For example, many US crypto enthusiasts are now barred for most CFI venues. And the only way that they can trade is on DeFi. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, is counterparty risk. So with counterparty risk, you know, we've seen just a while ago, uh, FTX exchange, we've seen Celsius, we've seen uh, custodials who people trusted with their money in the CFI world lose, lose billions. Okay, and these funds uh, were misappropriated. People didn't know exactly what's happening. Now in DeFi, it's important to understand that we don't have such as big counterparty risks because with self-custody, you know where your funds are. You can see on Uniswap exactly what happens in every part of the trade. Now DeFi is not perfect in this regard, but I do want to give a shout out to some friends uh, in Harrison Trotter, which is, I would say, the best uh, crypto uh, accountants in the world, uh, and Chainlink, who are the um, biggest oracles on chain. And one of the things that they're working on is to bridging the gap on the last areas of DeFi that we don't have full transparency of, and that is um, stable coins. Because stable coins, the biggest ones, have centralized reserves. And in order to know that the reserve is actually backed one to one, we need attestations. And now these attestations are coming from reputable providers like Harrison Trotter and available on chain for people like me to query. So this was the first part. So this is the goal. We want to be enablers to allow the next bull run to happen on chain. So what is holding it back? 
what sort of obstacles do we need to resolve? So the first obstacle, uh, and I will mention two main obstacles in my eyes uh, that we need to solve, is that the on-chain user, user experience is still very much behind if you compare it to the CFI one. And why is that? The main reason is that self-custody is really, really hard. Okay, uh, I don't know if any of you did the onboarding for MetaMask. The first thing you need to do is to write down your recovery phrase on a piece of paper. Now, everybody I know just skips this part. <laughs> and then it forces you, and then people lose a piece of paper. You know, re regular users, they lose their passwords all the time. Now, with self-custody, you can't recover your password. If you lose access to your keys, you lose your money. The world is not really ready to, for that. What is gas? I have a friend who just received some uh, USDT and he wanted to send it over. I tried to explain to him that he can't send it without some ETH. He, he didn't understand what I was talking about. So everything is a little bit more complex. Browser extensions, like if I try to explain my mom that she needs to install a browser extension in order to use something, she wouldn't know what to do. Um, and if you try to take an, a, a non-custodial wallet and access it from multiple devices, meaning from my phone and from my desktop, that's not an easy thing to do. So the whole user experience is quite wonky. Now, the biggest uh, advancement in this field now, in my eyes, is what we see with Telegram. So Telegram, I don't know if you've been in Singapore uh, in token 2049 just now, announced that they're taking a non-custodial wallet and putting it in inside almost every Telegram user's app. So these are the kings of UX. They know exactly how people like to use. In my eyes, this is one of the best messengers out there. And it's now, and it's now gonna start doing crypto natively. And this is, I put here a small video uh, I hope it's going to run. It's not running, but this small video uh, shows exactly the UX that you can see inside the Telegram app of this wallet, and it's amazing. You don't need to write a recovery phrase. It works very cleverly by encrypting and breaking down automatically your, your seed and sending it to some of your contacts, and then you can recover from them. So people find ways to overcome these problems. And if, if the video on the right uh, would show, then you would see that this wallet is being rolled out and will be available in every Telegram user's application, maybe not in the US, but almost everywhere else. What is the second issue? I talked about two main obstacles. So the first obstacle was the UX is still bad. Second obstacle is that on-chain prices are not competitive. Why, why is pricing important? If I want to trade and I get a bad price, I'm not going to trade here. Okay, I'm gonna go where I get a good price. And if CFI prices are much better than DeFi prices, the DeFi is not competitive. And we often see that this is the case. We see cases where you, I can't find this token. I go to a, to a chain and I try. Uh, and the reason for that is that liquidity is fragmented. It's not only fragmented between multiple chains, it's fragmented in the same chain between multiple EMMs, and in the same EMM, it's fragmented between multiple pools. Okay, the problem is, if you try to trade, you find you see that the price impact is 20%. You know, the fact that I'm trading changes the price. Now, the result of that is that there is low liquidity, not enough TVL. Okay, why is there not enough TVL? From a liquidity provider standpoint, you see that some other chain suddenly offers better liquidity rewards, so I take all my liquidity, move, move there. So we see a lot of jumping around. Interest rates are now high, so people who just put money and give it as liquidity have other ways with potentially less risk, so they don't put it on chain. And market makers, the traditional market makers, we don't see them almost at all uh, acting on chain. Let's talk about that. That is a big issue, because if you see most of the trade volume on CFI is, is traded using about 10 entities. These are the biggest market makers in the world. And if you really ask them, they would tell you that they don't like the chain at all. They prefer to trade on CFI. Now, why is that? They're used to order books. These companies evolved and emerged from the stock market, from commodities exchanges. So they're used to working in order book exchanges. Okay, in order book exchanges, you do high frequency trading. You change the orders, you update everything really quickly. That's how they, their business work. If you ask them, you know, if you try to change your position in Uniswap, your liquidity position, you need to pay a fee. Okay, this is how a blockchain works. What happens if they need to cancel an order? This is something that they need to do high frequency. Okay, they put stock in many places. This stock is no longer here. I have to cancel it immediately. Otherwise, I'm going to sell it twice. If confir confirming a block takes 15 seconds, it doesn't work. So no high frequency instructions. There is a whole world of MEV and gas bidding that they're not good at. So what we see now that the on-chain trading uh, environment is not really cut out for many of these big market makers. And this brings me to the last third uh, of what we're gonna talk about. And this is what Orbs is building, the Orbs liquidity hub. So if you trade now, 
um, on a DEX in an AMM, uh, you go and you send your swap to this DEX. Now what Orbs is building is something that instead of going directly to the DEX and using the limited amount of TVL that the DEX has, um, we actually do an, um, an RFQ, request for quote, and get quotes from two places. One place is a solver auction. This is something similar to Uniswap X, where we go to solvers that can do on-chain and cross-chain trading, and they could offer you a better price. And the second place is an order book. Now this order book looks to market makers exactly like a centralized order book. They don't pay any fee uh, when you change orders there all the time. Um, and we plug it in into the on-chain immediately. Now this thing is completely decentralized and safe because we can always guarantee with a smart contract that the quote that we give you through this is better than the one that you get in the DEX. And through this mechanism, we allow QuickSwap to tap into much larger liquidity. If today the TVL, the total value lock of liquidity that QuickSwap has is $100 million, with the technology that we give them, they can now access the entirety of what Polygon TVL has, this is the chain, which is 800, the entirety of all on-chain TVL across all chains, which is 100 billion, 11 billion, and the entirety of the liquidity available on DeFi, which is 110 billion. So the pricing impact that this can give to DeFi is significant, and the prices will be just as competitive as you can see in CFI. So if yesterday TVL was king, today volume is king. And this is a perception that is changing in the liquidity, in the on-chain liquidity world that we're helping push. I will finish with just saying, uh, showing some of the DEXs uh, around the world that use our technology. Uh, so Orbs, our infrastructure, is in production now uh, in QuickSwap, which is the largest DEX on Polygon. Thena, second largest uh, on BNB chain. SpookySwap is the largest on Phantom. Base on Base chain. Kronos on Arbitrum. Spirit Swap. Thank you.